congratulations, you get to write a research paper. Now what? I'm here today to talk to you about some ways to find resources and get a start on that assignment. A little about myself. While I've worked for a long time in marketing and content management, I returned to grad school in the fall of 2019 to earn a master's degree in library science. It's not my first master's degree, but the field of research and scholarship has completely changed since I earned my MA in 2002. I've had a crash course in electronic research, working as an intern for SMU, and doing my assignments for grad school. I've been going through the same process as I do my own research and writing. So what are we going to talk about today? The blank page. How should I start researching my topic? Where do I begin? Search results. How do I evaluate what I'm finding? How do I judge when I've found the right resources? And refining your topic or position. How do I take what I've found and turn that into a research paper? The blank page. As you start to consider your topic and assignment, one of the things that will help you is learning more about it. What are some ways to do that? Yes, Google search. Look at Wikipedia. Learn more about the most basic ideas of your topic. For example, I worked with a student last week who needed to discuss whether the idea of community is important to the characters in the matrix. In order to be able to argue for or against that idea, you'd need to, de excuse me, you'd need to define what community is first. Doing some background research to understand the concept of community will help you A, understand the concept, and B, refine your research. Another way to do this is to search for the topic in our everything search at the library catalog. So you pull up the library website, smu.edu slash libraries, and you see a big search box. If you search for community in that box, what will you find? Hmm, eight million results. That's a lot. So you start thinking about the topic. What other words might scholars or professors use when discussing the idea of community or its opposite? Society, compassion, individualism, Start searching for related terms or combine them to see what results you get, like society and compassion, or society versus individualism. Scroll through the results and start to see if any of the titles appeal to you. Think of the research process as a way to learn more about this topic. What do you want to know more about? What titles sound interesting to you? If you find a title that's interesting, open its listing in the catalog. You'll see a list of subject headers that can be used to find similar articles and books. If you can open the resource online, you can read through it and see if you agree or disagree with what's being said, and look at the bibliography to find similar resources on the topic. As you become more familiar with the topic, see if we have a research guide on the subject. Our librarians have built guides that will point you to databases on specific fields of research, allowing you to narrow your search to researchers in those fields. The more you search, the more you will find about your topic, and the clearer your topic will, and the form of your paper will become. For example, your everything search can give you clues about keywords to use and what research guides may be helpful. Take a look at this search result for society and compassion. Look at the top here, where it says the search results include empathy. Now we have a new keyword to add to our list. If you're not sure about what research guide would be helpful, look at the subject areas here in the left column by the lower arrow. Are you thinking about community from a social sciences approach? Or how humans act in a community? Maybe psychology. Since we're looking at our catalog, here's a reminder of what you'll see if you click on a resource title. The buttons at the top can be used to save or share the resource, resource information. As you scroll down and see more of the listing, you'll see if you can access them online 
and then the subject headers I mentioned earlier. There are a couple of common problems when deciding on a topic and doing background research. Unfortunately, it's nearly impossible to create a best topic. Try not to think of your topic, sorry, try to think of your topic as a starting point, not something that can be controlled. Don't limit your topic to the first thing you consider. Remember that topics develop. They're not chosen. Adapt your topic as you search and learn more about it. Start with a basic topic idea and start searching. Use this for background searches to find a topic that interests you. This will most likely lead you down a path that you can develop into a paper. If you feel like you're not getting anywhere, consider it rethinking your topic or how you're approaching it. If you're having a hard time understanding what you're finding, you're probably finding very high level research on your topic. Try different keywords to find articles that are more basic and with less jargon. Analyzing your resources. So you've got some articles that seem intriguing. Let's look at them one at a time and ask these questions. First, who wrote this paper and why are they an expert on the topic? Do a quick search to see how many papers they have published or whether this particular paper has been cited as a good example or a bad one. This is why I mentioned my credentials when I introduced myself. I might be qualified to talk to you about research or literature, but I'm probably not the right person to talk about how to repair a heart valve or build a server network. It's not just, does this person have a PhD or an MD, but is there research related to this paper? What is the paper based on? Did they do research, like a study or a literature review? How big was the sample? Small samples can often skew the results. And where was the paper published? What journal or publication? Keep in mind too that the old way of publishing research, submitting to peer reviewed journals, also kept a lot of researchers out of these venues. A person with a PhD and working at Harvard is still capable of writing a paper that is not well founded. A person working on a degree and previously unpublished might only be able to publish her work on a blog or personal website. There are not right or wrong answers to these questions. They are something to consider as you evaluate these resources. This is also something to remember as you take these skills into the workplace after you earn your degree. Are you going to have to make a presentation on thematic points in a popular movie? Probably not. But you will need to consider where to find trustworthy information and how to evaluate its arguments when putting together business proposals or reports. I mentioned whether a paper or author has been cited as one way to measure expertise. This research guide on our website is aimed at professors who are publishing, but the tools can be used by researchers too. Note that different tools are helpful for measuring citation based on the field of research. Web of Science is good for, well, science, while Google Scholar is good for humanities-based research. I also wanted to point out that like this guide, we have other topic guides at the library website that help you as you're crafting your paper. These are tools you can use throughout the research and writing process. Most sources found via SMU libraries should be reliable. Be aware of anything that doesn't use studies or research to back up claims. Remember, too, to use our research guides to narrow your searches for resources related to your topic. If you find that upon further evaluation, your resources don't fit your approach, try searching a different database that falls in a different subject category. So you've thought about your topic and you found some resources on the subject. How can you turn that into a cohesive paper? Now you need to consider, is the information I found relevant to my topic? Do the articles tie into the position I'm considering? How? 
Remember that your position is your specific take on this topic. It's a new perspective on what you have found in your research, considering what all others have already studied and written about. You're contributing to this scholarly conversation. Rather than presenting a report, the experts say this. Think of your paper as a synthesis of your research. This explanation comes from the Purdue Online Writing Lab, which has some great examples of how to think about your resources. A literature review is an example of an explanatory synthesis, where you're gathering several resources and identifying similar trends and where the articles or resources differ. An argumentative synthesis is one where you have to take a position, like the example I used at the beginning of this presentation. Is the idea of community important to characters in the matrix? Yes or no? How does your research inform your argument? You need to ask yourself what the common ideas or threads are in the resources you've found. Go through your resources and find those common ideas or threads that link them together. To use another example from the Purdue Online Learning Lab, if you were researching pros and cons, of encouraging healthy eating in children. You would want to separate your sources to find which ones agree with each other and which ones disagree. As you start seeing connections between your resources, those can lead to paragraphs in your paper. Just make sure that everything ties back to your main topic. If what you have found is not coming together well into a cohesive narrative or argument, Consider if you need to find more resources or to rethink your topic. Some final thoughts. Your topic may change as you do your research. Remember that as you begin the research process, that is when you know the least about your topic. As you search and read through results and resources, you will learn more about it and refine your ideas. Sometimes you need to research. Research is not always a linear process. You might need to change keywords to broaden or limit your results. Sometimes you start looking through your resources and realize you don't have enough or they don't relate to each other as you thought they would. That's okay. Give, your spell, give yourself the space and time to rethink and research if necessary. Finally, research before you write. Remember that writing should always be the last part of this process, not the first. It's easier to craft a narrative out of several resources than to find that perfect article that matches what you've already written. And if you have questions, ask. Email me at joannab.mail at mail.smu.edu. Make an appointment with me or another librarian to discuss your research, or join us at the Research and Writing Lab on Tuesday from 4 to 5.30 or Wednesday from 11 to 12.30 to talk with both a librarian and a writing tutor. Good luck, and don't forget to cite those resources.